How to blow up your balance in five easy steps, this time on K6 UDA Radio. I've been called a lot of things over the years, but this is a first. Last week on my show about club membership, I got a lot of, I got a lot of mail I got a lot of mail from guys who have been dissed by clubs, a lot of guys who uh, went to club meetings, felt welcome, didn't feel welcome, wanted to join, didn't decided they didn't want to join. And then I get this letter from Steve. You could do any of that type of stuff at any club of any type. Sorry, but ham radio is a technical pursuit and if the leaders of clubs continue to alienate members who want to build and operate, then they are just going to succeed in converting the technical hobby of ham radio into the religion of ham radio, where members don't do anything except have amusing meetings. Understand, there are loads of technical people out there who actually invented the hobby and they don't take kindly to religious leaders like yourself, putting loads of effort into making people feel welcome at the expense of doing a quality ham radio program. You better start putting some effort in, son, because technical people won't mind their hobby back from the religious do-nothing zealots with loads and loads to say and all to actually do. Huh? I'm a religious leader now. Wow, that's fucking cool. Henceforth, you will refer to me as Reverend Bob from the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. So one of the seven great mysteries of the universe is how do I talk around the world with this piece of wire here or this big giant piece of wire here? These things, part science, part hocus pocus. Now, I'm no Mr. Wizard and a lot of you guys out there probably know a ton more about this crap than I do. but. I'm gonna share what I know, what little I know, and I know just about enough to probably blow something up. Our radios like to see 50 ohms, and that makes them real happy. These simple wire antennas usually don't radiate at 50 ohms, so we gotta do something to make that radio happy, because this piece of wire, although it may get hot, and it may do something you don't want it to do, it's a whole lot less expensive than burning up your nice new ICOM 7300. But if you happen to be using something like an AL80B amp, that's not gonna shut itself off in time, and you're gonna do some serious damage to either your radio, the amplifier, or both. So to help us make that radio happy, keep everything at 50 ohms, God invented balance. This is a four to one balance. And what does a balance mean? A balance takes unbalanced. So what a balance does in theory is it takes the unbalanced line, like in a coax here, and it matches it to the balanced line, like this 450 ohm twin lead. And why do they call this balanced line? Because both of my ends of my antenna come off of each leg of this strain relief. And that strain relief is tied to the two wires inside of here. Now, each side of this is in theory balanced. This piece of coax is unbalanced. It has one center conductor 
and then it has the metal braid around it which it well you would think that all the RF travels in the center and is shielded with the outside but that isn't how it all works and to be perfectly honest I'm not Mr. Wizard so I don't know exactly how it works but oh what my feeble-minded friend is trying to tell you is that by the way I'm Dr. Bellin from the Bellin Institute I only play a doctor on this video however um, is that this whole idea of Bellin's and uh, feed lines and 4 to 1, 3 to 1, 12 to 1 can be very confusing you know here's a here's a couple examples okay, okay so I'm going to break it down into three easy to remember things. Number one, always try to match the ballon to the antenna. And I'll talk about that just a little bit more in a minute. Uh, number two, always use a current ballon. Best practices say that if you're connecting to a wire antenna, always use a current ballon. And number three, always use good feed line, whether it's open wire line or or a coax, always use good feed lines. It's very, very important to get the right match. And you're gonna need an antenna analyzer to get that match when you're first setting up your station. So my biggest advice to you is, number one, find yourself an antenna analyzer. And number two, find yourself a smart friend who could come help you set this whole thing up. If you're building a dipole antenna, uh, a, a straight dipole antenna, and you want the lowest loss you can get, you want to use the 450 ohm or 350 ohm ladder line, that open wire with the strain relief, and you've got your two ends at the top. Because it's say between 200 ohms and 400 ohms, at the feed point, you need to bring that down to 50 ohms to make the radio happy. And the way you're gonna make that radio happy is with that four to one ballon, because, the, because it... Okay, okay, uh, Bob is obviously way, way out of his league here. So let's talk about this whole matching thing. One to one, four to one, two to one. Which one do you use? Well, BALAN is an acronym for balanced, unbalanced. B-A-L for balanced, UN for unbalanced. So if you look at that ratio one to one, the right-hand side is always the transmitter. It's 50 ohms, always the transmitter. The left-hand side, which is the two to one, or the four, or the 12, or the 32, or whatever, is the antenna, the antenna feed point. So the first thing to remember is or the first thing to look for is what is my what is my antenna impedance? What is the, what is the antenna looking for? So if it's a dipole, simple dipole, probably 75 ohms, pretty close to 50 ohms. So one to one works just fine. You know, if it's a off center fed or a beam uh, or an end fed, it's going to be much higher. So then you're going to go to two to one. So really quickly, if it's a two to one, that means it's twice the 50 ohms, 100 ohms. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, whether to use a current or a voltage ballon. Again, best practices say always use a current ballon. And that's because a current ballon tries and it, it will match the current at the feed point on both legs or the output of the ballon, which is what you want because mismatches at the antenna feed point means that the coax or the, or the uh, whatever your feed line is going to be is going to radiate RF in the shack current coming down the pipe, which is what you don't want. So current balance is the best thing to use. And it matches somehow the, the balanced part coming up and down with the unbalanced part that's going to the back of your radio or your tuner. And number three, whether it's coax or twin lead, check it out. Check it out, make sure it's not shorted, make sure it's uh, not kinked, and make sure that you've got 50 ohms across it. An antenna analyzer works really well to do that. Um, and that's it from Dr. Bellin. If you like this video, subscribe, hit the like, 
share it on Facebook, tweet it on Twitter, talk about it on ham radio, help me grow, help this channel grow. And I guarantee you there's going to be something really, really cool coming up. And you guys are going to want to be part of it from the church of the flying spaghetti monster. I'm Bob K6 UDA and I'm out of here. Seven, three. You technical guys, you're going to kill me to take back your hobby. <laughs> Good luck with that, my friends, because I come heavily armed. <laughs>